Cinema 4D Release 18 includes full support for vertex colors, which are really handy in a lot of game workflows because they eliminate texture lookups. And they can also come in handy anytime you need to add varying color on a object and you don't want to actually set up a UV map because the vertex colors are based on the points rather than the UVs. So here we have our max character here and currently he's textured using some polygon selections. I'm just going to delete the polygon selections and we're going to build this up using vertex color. Now the first thing I'm going to do is something that you could already do in previous versions of Cinema 4D and that is to bake the ambient occlusion as a vertex map. So for that, we're going to add a bake texture tag. We're going to go down here into the options, hit ambient occlusion, and activate the two vertex map option, and just hit bake. And now you can see we have a vertex map that actually shows the ambient occlusion of this mesh. Now, I want to paint on top of this ambient occlusion, and so to do that, I need to convert this grayscale vertex map into a color vertex map. And to do that, we go to the Convert Vertex Map option in the Select menu. And here you have options to convert from individual RGBA grayscale map to a vertex color map. Or you can convert from a vertex map into individual grayscale maps for RGB and A. Or finally, we can fill the vertex color, which basically takes the grayscale value and colorizes it. So for this, I'm going to take that grayscale vertex map. And let's go ahead and choose sort of a mid-blue like we had for Max before there, something like that. And I'm just going to hit the Create button here in order to create a new vertex map. We'll go ahead and close this now. And you can see that Max is completely blue with the benefit of the ambient occlusion. Now we want to go ahead and paint this mesh. So I'm going to go into the Paint tool. This is the same tool that you would use to paint grayscale vertex maps, but now there's a paint mode to paint RGB plus alpha vertex maps. And there's a number of modes here. You can paint in normal mode, add, subtract, multiply, light and dark and smooth, bleed, intensity, remap. And we're actually going to use remap because that allows us to keep this ambient occlusion effect and paint color on top of it. Now, of course, we can take our tool and paint directly in the interface and use the middle mouse button to adjust the opacity of the brush and drag left and right to adjust the size. And we can paint up things this way. We can even control the uh, fall off. And as well, we can also adjust the hardness, opacity, or radius with the pen pressure of the graphics tablet. But instead of painting directly, what I'm going to do is select the specific areas that need to be white and simply use the apply selected command to paint those areas. So the first thing I'm going to do is select all of the polygons that are supposed to be white. And we need to make sure to activate the vertex map that we want to paint onto. Now, when I do that, though, it's going to change the selection mode here. So what you might find useful in this case is to actually activate the paint tool and pop out a new attribute manager. And that way we can lock that into the paint tool mode. And in fact, you might want to just switch the lock icons there so we're locking the mode rather than the actual attribute. And so now we're going to go ahead and make sure our vertex map is selected and we'll select white and simply hit apply selected and now all of those areas get painted white now there's one thing to keep in mind when you paint the vertex maps and that is that the vertex maps themselves have two types vertex colors can be painted for points only which is going to actually create a blend between the points or you can paint them with the polygons option so i'm going to undo that I'm going to convert this to polygon points and we'll apply selected. And you see now we get much sharper edges because of the way that the vertex maps are stored. You get four vertex colors per point rather than just one. Now you can convert between these two, but once you convert into the points only mode, you can't go back to polygon points because you've actually lost that data. So keep that in mind and choose the type of vertex color that you actually want. In this case, I'm going to go back to the polygon points option. Now we want to go ahead and select the black areas. And once again, you need to make sure to reactivate the vertex color tag so that we're painting on the same vertex color tag. Otherwise, this paint tool is going to create a new tag. And I'm going to hit apply selected to go ahead and paint that black 
line around the eyeball. Now that we've got Max painted up, we want to be able to see this paint in the render. And so to do that, we need to apply it as part of a texture. So we'll go ahead and create a new material. And in the color channel, I'm going to go into the texture dropdown and choose to add a vertex map shader from the effects dropdown. You need to pop into that shader and drag the vertex map in so that the shader knows which vertex map it's using. And then we can just apply this material. And now you'll see that Max is fully shaded. Now, of course, one of the key reasons you'd use vertex colors is for game workflows. So if we export this out as an FBX, we can export those vertex colors. Just make sure that the vertex colors option here is checked. Now, of course, the vertex map shader can be used in other places as well. For instance, if I go ahead and add some hair onto Max, I'm going to remove the selection and add a hair object. And we'll go ahead and set this hair down to something like one centimeter. And I'm just going to go ahead and replace the default hair material with this one that I've created earlier, just with some extra frizz and kink options. But what we can do is go into the roots here and set the texture to a vertex map. And here again, we can drag that same vertex map in. And now when we render, you can see that we get the hair based on the color. And actually, we need a lot more hairs here. So we'll go into the hairs option and we'll just increase this quite a bit. So that's a look at how you can use vertex maps in Cinema 4D to add color and texture to your objects without actually having to set up a UV map. And also, it can come in handy in a lot of game development workflows. If you enjoyed this quick tip, please like, share, and visit Cineversity.com for more great Cinema 4D tutorials and resources.